I'm very pleased to be here in Stockholm. Thank you very much to Christian and to the Institute of, for Future Studies um, uh, for the invitation. Um, first of all, I have to clarify, I'm not working for the University of Hamburg, I'm working for Passage, it's a little NGO, um, a non-profit organization working for uh, employment and integration, and I'm, I was initiating in 2002, when the Equal program started, a uh, network for vocational integration for refugees and asylum seekers. And um, uh, up to now, we are funded by the land of Hamburg and by the Ministry of um, Social Affairs and uh, Labor and Social Affairs. The, the export. Um, no, on this slide you can see what we are doing in this network, but uh, due to the lack of time, I will not uh, go, go into the details of we are what we are working. Um, I, I would like to come over to the Leonardo project, which in, in which what already was presented by Louis-Henri Sucre. And uh, the export um, presented here in the Leonardo project is based on practical experience in vocational integration of refugees and asylum seekers since the last 10 years or more, a little bit more than 10 years. Is, uh, but what we can say is that a slow process of paradigm shift has been taking place on the part of government with respect to the participation of this group in education and labor market. The Hamburg City Report entitled Vocational Integration of Refugees and Asylum Seekers in Hamburg, Roundabout Routes from Model to Structure, reflects exclusion and inclusion mechanism of formal and non-formal educational programs in Hamburg while focusing on the factors and concepts which improve refugee sensitive vocational integration work in that city. It shows how useful medium or long-term regular financial support of models and experimental projects in the field of vocational integration of refugees and asylum seekers is for the sustainability, sustainability of innovations. That is their transfer from experimental projects into regular structures, thus changing progressively in a positive sense. The political discourse as well as the administrative practices regarding the vocational integration of this disadvantaged group in Hamburg. However, these positive changes also bring them to some challenges regarding, for instance, the systematic inclusion in regular VET structures where refugees and asylum seekers have been excluded until now. Practical experiences show barriers to access uh, to the acquisition of training and admission to the employment market and also the added value for the individuals and for the German host society and the world of work. That's it's why I would like to give you an example. We will, after this presentation, we will this, hear, hear the story of um, Alieu, but now I'd like to introduce to you Arash. The biography of Arash gives a good impression of the barriers for access to education under the legislation applicable until 2005. Compared, uh, compared with other member states in the EU, Germany has for many years operated a very restrictive education, social and employment policy for refugees. Mostly refugees are not granted asylum in Germany without recognition they are required to leave the country and they have only a tolerated status, which is only a time-limited suspension of the deportation of a person who cannot leave the country voluntarily. Sorry for the slide, I know this is not readable, but I would wanted to give you a little 
overview about the many stages he has to, he has to, to challenge. The family had to leave Afghanistan due to the war situation here. Arash was selected by his family to migrate to the West. He left his family at the age of 14 years and traveled to Germany alone in the hope of finding better opportunities. As an unaccompanied underage refugee, he was allocated to a youth flat on arrival in Hamburg and was given supervision. His school career was marked by major interruptions and was given supervision, uh, sorry. His school attendance had been irregular even in Afghanistan due to the war situation and here he had to catch up with the material of three school years in a very short period. In Hamburg he was allocated to, uh, to a preparatory class of a grammar school but failed there. Then he went to a comprehensive school, completing it with junior high school leaving certificate. On transition to further education programs, he failed due to the structural barrier of German legislation. He could not get a work permit, so had to take on occasional unskilled jobs to earn a living. Thanks to the specific conditions of the Hamburg network, he was able to work his way through qualification programs, which were divided in modules uh, because participation does not require a work permit. That enabled him to get acceptance for an internship in a building company. The company was willing to take Arash on as a trainee, but it took many months for him to get a work permit. In the end, he proved possible to get him to work a work permit thanks to an agreement between the network and the job center because this was an additional traineeship. Arash managed to achieve his dream via roundabout routes. After completing his education, he first worked in reinforced concrete. Then he had to change his vocational direction for health reasons. After attending a college of construction engineering, he took up studies of construction engineering at the Hafen City University in Hamburg. I think it's a very impressive career. All in all, we can say the company had recognized his potential and that opened up access for him to the real world of work and helped greatly to stabilize his life situation. That is demonstrated by his very good results in the final exams at the Chamber of Trade for his professional qualification, earning distin distinctions in a number of subjects. The network provided be a reliable guide throughout his educational career, helping him to overcome the barriers and gain access to the next stages. The story of Aras shows that he was able to increase his vocational capital thanks to his motivation and perseverance and that enabled him to live a life where he can continue his education and training on his own initiative, heeding for progress and economic security because he gained access to the funding instruments. He also made use of his cultural capital by supporting other, dis now, other, other disadvantaged migrants by his activity as a mentor during their school education. We can see in Hamburg after this long period of work, a start has been made. There are signs of inclusion of refugees. Even though until the beginning of 2012, Hamburg's integration policy was still based on a concept drawn up in 2006, the action concept uh, for integration of immigrants, which is not explicitly aimed at refugees, it is still possible to identify some indicators at the present time during the last years that show a change in the course of Hamburg practice in the actions of government and uh, administration. 
Up to 500 places per annum are funded by the land of Hamburg for refugees in integration courses, that means language and orientation, approved normally by the Federal Office for Migration and Refugees. The Hamburg programs to support disadvantaged groups of young people in their training have also been opened up for young uh, refugees with a tolerated status. The Hamburg ESF program in the target area of um, uh, labor market also implements the network project Opportunities for Refugees, one of the representatives also here in Stockholm today, which is co-financed by the funds of the Hamburg budget. The Future Action Plan of the City of Hamburg launched in February 2012 by the Ministry of Labor, Social Affairs, Family and Integration um, set, sets out the clear change in direction in its integration policy. It defines is itself as the global city of Hamburg, underlining enhancement of the intercultural processes of opening up in administration and emphasis the, the diversity, shared values and solidarity of its people. Participation of refugees with perspective of right to stay in asylum seekers is likewise defined as a cross-sectional task. This policy of the city of Hamburg is exemplary for the whole of Germany. This is an example for a successful mainstreaming process. The continuity of the programs over a long period is essential for the structural change at the political and practical level. But nevertheless, it is clear that the area of labor market integration for this group, for the refugees and participation in voca vocational training is still an experimental field. Uh, this is our experience. In practice, they are still major obstacles uh, that obstruct or prevent participation in the employment market in Hamburg, in Germany, or even more in the other European member states. In order to help the local VET institutions to tackle this inclusion and diversity management challenge successfully, a concept of refugee monitoring and educational and VET systems was developed. The goal is to implement a monitoring process and regular educational reporting, which includes the group of refugees in Hamburg. Currently, the discussion is going on. The first educational report was developed by ourselves, also thanks to the cooperation to, the, to another Hamburg university, in cooperation with vocational schools in Hamburg, in order to analyze the preparation programs for students whose language of origin is not German. That means mainly for unaccompanied minors who are fleeing alone to Germany. And we have many of them in Hamburg. Our subject now is to discuss the analysis on issues of structural and pedagogical fit of the education and training courses for asylum seekers. We are convinced that these instruments, the introduction of a monitoring system explicitly for refugees and educational reporting in Hamburg and elsewhere, contribute to improve structures for the respective educational and consulting work and to sound educational planning and thus to achieve sustainability. Thank you very much. <laughs>